Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you uh, a continuation of an earlier video I did on custom states. In the earlier video, I did custom states at a, uh, a page level. And let me just do a quick demo here. So these three buttons, and basically I'm using custom states to show these different groups. In this video, what I'm going to do is show you how to use a custom state within a group. So within this, within this purple group here, group one, I have three buttons, account info, profile, and misc. And what I've got here is when I have account info, user account info, um, this is another group inside, and then I click on profile, user profile info, and then user misc info. So these are three different groups within this group one here. And these three buttons are basically using custom states within the group. So not at a page level, but within a group. So if I go over here, click group two and group three, and then I come back over to group one, you can see that it's profile now, group two, come back over and profile. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do set this up in this video. One other thing I want to show you also is you'll see when I hover here on uh, account info, the color doesn't change. If I hover here, profile changes to green, but now that I've picked profile, it doesn't. And when I come over here to hit misc, and when I hit misc now, it does change color. So what I want to do is in the conditionals tab, I want to show you how to set this up so that you can have it when you uh, have your mouse over the button, it doesn't change color um, or it does change color. So let's get into the design here. All right, so again, this is a continuation of an earlier uh, video I did and I will uh, put the link down below in my comments, in my notes. And so basically I have this group here uh, called One Thing and within it I've added these three buttons here, MISC Profile Account Info, and I also have these three groups, and within each of the group, I just have a simple text field in there, so Group Account Info, User Profile Info, and User MISC Info. Okay, so it's three simple groups, and basically, just in case you're not familiar with groups, so basically you just pick a group here and just add it on. Just like that and that's all I did I didn't change any color or anything on those and then similarly for buttons come over here and for the buttons I just simply added buttons within there for each of these three all right so again account info profile and misc and what I've done here I'm going to click on the group big one all right let me just go over here so group big one and come over here to I. And what I've done is I've created a custom state here called user account info. All right. And I have a, it's of type text. So I could have cho chosen a variety of things, but text because I'm going to type in what I want to trigger the uh, custom state to, to work on in the, in the, the um, profile, or not the profile, the uh, workflows. So account info, I have that as a default. And basically what that means is when the page refreshes, I have this group here, account info. And when group one big's user account info is account info, then it's visible. And when group one big's user account info is not account info, then it is not shown. So again, I'm just going to walk through this again. So this group, big one. I have a custom state, user account info, and the default value is account info. Okay, so when I come over here to this group, it's a child within group one, big. So that's this purple, pur purple group here. So when group one big's user account info is account info, then make it visible. And let me just come down here to show you how that's done. So when group one, big, and then down at the bottom here, user account info. So this is the name of the custom state here. So I click on that. 
and then is, and then the, the value, account. If I could spell here, account info, just like that. Now you'll see that the parentheses are already in here. If I were to go and put parentheses in here, like that, you now see that it's got double parentheses. So when you go and, and use text, so again, let me just go back up here. When you do have type text and you type in the value, you just want to make sure that you don't add the parentheses. Bu Bubble will automatically do that for you. Okay, so don't add parentheses in there. That can be a, a mis uh, you know an issue sometimes when you're when it doesn't work and you're trying to figure it out. You, you type in the parentheses and uh, Bubble will look at this literally. So even if I had a lowercase a here, all right, that's different than with a, a capital A here. All right, so you just want to make sure it is. It, Bubble is case sensitive for this, um, and spelling, of course. All right, so that's basically how you set it up. And then for this group here, profile info. So again, group one big, user account info. All right, so group one big. When you click on it, user account info. And then is, then profile info. And then similarly for this one here, for this group, group one bigs user account info is misc info. And then when it is uh, misc info, it'll be visible. When it is not misc info, you want to make sure you deselect element is visible to hide it. And the other thing I did on here is for the button. So when the button is hovered, I turn it green. Uh, and then when the one group's user account info is account info, I just wanted to change the color. Again, it's a visual cue so that the user, your users, will know what group is being selected. Similarly here, when it's hovered, it turns green. And then just to, to show you in more detail, so when this button is hovered, And then I just change uh, the background color here, like that. And I just picked green. So that's how you select it. You could do, you could, uh, let's see here, scroll up. I could do some other things on here. I can change it so that the font is bold as well. So you can do a variety of different things to change the attributes within uh, that button. Let me just go and remove that. And again, similarly, when group one bigs user account info is profile info, I just want to set the value um, of, of, the, uh, of the button. And I just, uh, let's see, visible, visible, actually that, remove that, and remove that because I want these buttons to always be visible. And let's see here. So for this one here, I want to just highlight something. The first um, one thing to keep in mind for pro conditionals here is that Bubble will treat them from top to bottom. So Bubble will see, is this button hovered? And if so, then it'll make it green. And then it's going to come down to this um, conditional here. And then it'll change the background color uh, of the button to uh, this, this color here. So the first one is green, and then this other yellowish kind of color. This one, I change the order, all right? So the first one is, is the group selected? Uh, is the uh, rather custom state selected for misc info? If it is, change the button background to this. And then the next thing it's gonna look at is, is the button hovered? And if it is, then it's gonna change it to green. I wanna show this to you that the, the, um, the order is important here because when I come back and do a page refresh, okay, so when I select profile here and I, I hover, it doesn't change color. When I hover on account info, it changes color, but now it doesn't change color because I've selected account info. When I select misc, okay, I go off and it changes yellow, but when I put my cursor over, it turns green again. And the reason why 
is because Bubble sees that the last conditional is when the button is hovered to turn it green. Now if I move this up like that, so I've changed the order, come over here, do a refresh. Now when I select it, it doesn't change. So it behaves like these other two buttons. All right, so just something to keep in mind that when you're doing conditionals and you're trying to tweak the behavior of buttons or whatever it may be, the order does matter. Okay, so keep that in mind. And basically that is um, how you set up uh, a um, custom state within a group. So in the earlier video, so custom state is the name of this page here. And you'll see that I have two of them, custom states, pick group and select button. And that's basically to uh, handle these buttons up here and then, then the groups as well. And what I wanted to show in this video is that you can also do custom states within, within a group. Okay, and in this case, I just have this one custom state. So this is kind of nice. Again, you can see that within you know your page you could have different groups showing up but then within the groups you can control groups within a group using custom state setting that custom state at the group level and that's basically it i hope this video uh, was helpful if you liked it give me a thumbs up i, I do appreciate those and uh, subscribe to my channel i do have some upcoming videos that i'm working on uh, so if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get notified. Any questions or comments, uh, please leave them down below, and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Thank you.